Hi everyone! Today we're going to talk about Power BI. This video is designed for the absolute beginner who's just getting started. Our scenario for today is we have mandatory training information that's coming from different sources. We want to combine all that information into one visual report. Today I will bring in two data sets. One is an Excel file and the second is a SharePoint online list. I am going to start with the Excel file. In this scenario, the Excel file contains a table that has the names of all the employees and their location. On the ribbon at the top of the screen, there are multiple tabs. Each tab has a section. Go to the Home tab and in the Data section, choose Get Data. A floating dialog box will appear. Power BI can connect to several data sources. Some may require premium licensing. The Excel one should be available to everyone, and if your company has SharePoint already, that connection should be available as well. Excel workbook is at the top of the list, but if you don't see the one you wanted, use the search bar on the left side of the dialog box. Select Excel workbook and get the file from your computer's hard drive. The navigator dialog box will appear. On the left side, you will see the option to import the sheets or the tables. As a best practice, I suggest that you import the tables. And here's why. Let's say I just select the master data sheet. I know that some people tend to put data validation or extra comments outside of their tables. If you bring in the whole sheet, you would bring in the comments as well, which aren't necessary for the visualizations we will create. So I'm going to deselect the sheet and I'm going to select the table instead. I always suggest you also name your tables as well to make it easier to know which one you want. I'm going to select employee location. At the bottom I have two choices, load or transform data. Load is going to send the information straight into Power BI and you can start building your visuals. Transform data is going to open the Power Query Editor so that you can clean your data. The Power Query Editor can only be used in the Power BI desktop application. Some of the things to look for when cleaning your data are remove any data that will not be used. Each column should have a single purpose. Don't mix employee names with location in the same column. Look for empty rows and columns and if you find them, remove them. Each column should have a single data type, meaning don't mix dates, numbers, and text in the same column. Make sure that Power BI has assigned the correct data type. Power BI is pretty good at detecting the correct data type, but it's always a good idea to double check. In this case, it has correctly identified that each of these columns contains text data. This data set is simple because it only contains the names and locations, so there's not much to look at. The more complex data set is the SharePoint list, so I will add that now. In the upper left-hand corner of Power Query Editor, click on New Source. The Get Data dialog box comes back up, and this time I will search for SharePoint and then select SharePoint Online List. Another dialog box appears where you will enter the URL to the SharePoint site where the list is hosted. The mistake I made the first time was putting in the URL to the list and got an error message. Once you enter the URL to the site, Click OK and another dialog box will appear. Here you will select your list from the choices, in this example, the mandatory training demo list. Then I will click OK and all of the information will be loaded into the Power Query Editor as a second data set. Now we're going to run through our data cleaning list again. The first thing that we're looking for is to remove any columns that we don't need. What you are seeing here is a lot of columns that SharePoint uses for metadata, which I don't need in my Power BI report. To remove the column, right click the column header and select remove. If you want to get rid of multiple columns, choose the first one, hold down the shift key, and then right click and select remove columns. Repeat as necessary until you have just the columns you need. Now let's check the data types assigned to the columns. Power BI did a pretty good job, but the date completed column is a text with numbers data type. I want this to be formatted as a date. Click the ABC123 icon in the header for the date completed column. On the menu, we have two different choices, date and time and just date. I don't need the time in this example, so just select date. I have also noticed that the title column has the first and last name, but the Excel file we imported earlier has the name in two columns. 
This could be an issue because the data model will not automatically know that these two tables are related using the key of name. This can be fixed in a couple of ways. The first option is to select the title column from the mandatory training list and choose split on the home tab in the transform section. Power BI will want to know how to split the data. Choose by delimiter. A floating dialog box will appear and the first thing we're gonna look at is choose the delimiter. In this example, the default is space and that works for our scenario. But if you click the drop down, there will be other options. Next is split at. The default here is each occurrence of the delimiter, but you can switch that to one of the other choices. I will leave the default and click OK. Notice that there are two columns, Title 1 and Title 2. Double click in the column header to change the name. So I will change the first one to first name and the second column to last name. I want to draw your attention to the query settings on the right side of the screen. In the Apply to Steps box, notice that we can see an entry for each of the changes we just made. If you want to undo any of the steps, you can select it and click the X in front of the name. For this scenario, we're done cleaning our data, so I will go to the upper left-hand corner and save what we have done. You will be prompted to apply the changes as well. To exit the Power Query Editor, click on Close and Apply. Now we are back in the Power BI desktop application. On the left side of the screen, there are three items in the navigation bar, Report View, Data View, and Model View. I'm going to select Model View. Here you can see that we have two data sources, but they are not connected. Why would that be the case? Well, the model is looking for a piece of data that is the same to make the connection. As I mentioned a few moments ago, the employee location Excel file has a first name and a last name. The mandatory training SharePoint list has a title column. Power BI does not recognize that they are the same thing. To fix this, I can select first and last name from the employee location and drag it on top of title in the mandatory training card. This now establishes a one-to-many relationship. In Power BI, the asterisk symbol is used to indicate many. The names are on the employee location file once, but people have multiple mandatory classes, so their names are on that list several times. Next, I'm going to select Data View to make one last change to the data. In Power Query, the columns in the employee location file were correctly identified as the text data type. However, the employee location is also a city. I can add a category to give more context to this information. Click on the Employee Location column and you will see Column Tools appear at the top of the page. Under the Properties section, you can see that the data category is uncategorized. Click on the drop-down and select City. Now Power BI knows that the Employee Location is Text and a City at the same time. If you go to the right-hand side of the screen, you will see the globe icon in front of Employee Location. We have completed the first major step of loading and cleaning data, as well as setting up relationships between the data sources. Now we can build our visuals. I have selected the Report View tab, and you are seeing a blank canvas where we will build the visuals. One piece of advice that someone gave me when I first started working with business intelligence reports is, there's a lot of data available. Know the story you wanna tell, or you might end up overwhelming and confusing the people reading your report. In our example, it is important to know when training is due, who has not completed their training on time, and look for who may almost be due so that we can send them a reminder. Let's start with some basic navigation so I can draw your attention to some key elements on the page. On the far right, you will see a data section. These are the tables that we uploaded. If you click the arrow next to any of them, it will expand to show the column headers from the list and the Excel file. These fields will be used to select information for our report. In the next section, we have different visualizations to choose from. Whichever one you select will change what you see in the values fields below. Back at the top of the visualizations column, you will also see a page with a paintbrush icon. This is to allow you to format your report. There are many things that you can format, but we're gonna start with a simple example. I will open the wallpaper and I'm gonna change the background color from white to a light blue. 
The reason that I like to do this is that the visualizations are also on a white background. And if you leave the canvas white, then they tend to blend together a little bit. To add a visual, you can start either by selecting a piece of data or a visual. When you select a piece of data, Power BI will choose the default visual. For this example, the employee location field is also a location data type. So a map field visual will be the default. Notice that we have some circles that are based on the city in the Excel file. By default, all the bubbles are the same size, but I can change that by adding a second piece of data to the map. In the visualizations column below the icons, you can see some fields that we can use to modify the map, and I want to use bubble size. I'm going to drag and drop the last name into the bubbled size field. The map updated to show us that there are a lot of people in DC that need to do some training. If you hover your mouse over each bubble, a tooltip will pop up showing you how many people are in each location. Next, we will add another visual to help us know if people have completed their training or not. As a tip, before adding a new visual, make sure you click on a blank part of the canvas. If you do not and then select a new type of visual, it'll update whatever is currently selected. So I clicked in a blank space and then I'm going to select stacked column chart. A blank chart is inserted onto the canvas. First, I'm going to drag and drop the complete column from the mandatory training list into the field for the X axis. This is a yes, no indicator. Then I'm going to put month due on the Y axis. Power BI is going to turn this into a count. So if I hover over each of the bars, you will see a number for who has completed or not completed their training. Now, my data is based on an entire year, so the fact that there are so many people who have not created training is not a big deal yet because some of these people have training due later in the year. To clarify the story that we're trying to tell with this report, I'm going to grab a slicer from the visualizations pane and drag and drop it onto the canvas. Then I'm gonna go to the data section and drag and drop month completed onto the slicer. So now you've seen me add data to visuals in multiple ways, dragging and dropping, selecting a visualization and adding data, or selecting the data and letting Power BI select the default visual. In the slicer, we can now use the checkboxes next to each month to narrow down the data. So for example, I'm going to select May. Now we have several people who have completed their training and just a few who have not. If I want to know who hasn't completed their training, I can right click over the no column and then choose show data point as table. And now we've drilled down to the granular data to see that there are six trainings due by three different people. Click back to report when you're done viewing the data. Now I want to see if anyone is past due so I can click on the prior month to see that information and then drill down again. Right click on the no column and select show data point as table. It looks like Megan is past due on three of her trainings, so I might want to send her a friendly notification. Click back to report when you're done. You may be wondering what if you want to see two months, the current and the prior month together. Select a month in the slicer, hold down your control key and select the next month. Now you will see both months at the same time. It looks like Megan just got back to us and said that she completed her courses earlier today. So why is this not reflected in the data? In this example, I have not refreshed yet. Power BI does not continuously update in the background. I can manually refresh the data from the Home tab in the Query section. Depending on the type of Power BI license you have, you may be able to schedule automatic refreshes. However, manual refreshes by clicking the button are unlimited regardless of license type. Now that we've refreshed the data and I select April again, it shows that everyone has completed their training. We are done building our first basic report and it's giving us the data that we need for the story we intended to tell. Now I want to share it with a coworker. To do that, it needs to be published. Power BI reports are published to workspaces, which are places to collaborate with colleagues and organize content. The workspace holds the data sets, the reports, etc. You see here that I have two workspaces, my workspace, which is personal, and a testing team, which is shared with a group of people. 
I will select the testing team and then click on the green select button at the bottom of the floating dialog box. A status box appears letting you know that Power BI is publishing the report and when it's done it will say success and just click got it to close it. Now that the report is published, let's look at how we can find the Power BI web application. I have navigated to Microsoft365.com and in the upper left hand corner, I will click the app launcher, otherwise known as the waffle icon, and then select Power BI from the list. In the left hand navigation menu towards the bottom, you will see workspaces. Here you will see your personal workspace and any other you've been invited to. Once you select it, you will see the reports and the data sets that are contained in that workspace. In this case, we were working on one that I called Power BI 2. I'm going to click on the report and open it up. And here you see that it looks exactly like it did on the desktop app. You can even edit the report from here if you have permissions to do so. When I click on edit, the visualizations and the data panes will open up. Let's say I want to modify this slicer so that it includes not just the month, but the course name that was completed. Notice that there is a drop down next to each month in the slicer. So I'm going to scroll down and I'm going to select May. Now I can see the names for all four mandatory trainings. Maybe I just need to know something about who has completed the anti-workplace harassment seminar. Just like the desktop, when I select that, the stacked bar chart changes, and then I can go over to the no column, right click, and show data point as a table. Maybe I need to send a reminder to Lee and Francis. So there you go. Now we've walked through the process of creating a simple Power BI report. If you want to know more about Power Platform tools, please check out the playlist on the screen now. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.